In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look at an explosion of thunderstorms and severe weather around the nation. Obviously, we have had a big lull in activity, which has been really, really great considering how active things were in March and April. We were predicting this lull, but it is about to come to an end as we see an explosion of warmth, humidity, and overall thunderstorms coming up very very soon first off let's look at the six to ten day temperature outlook here from the national weather service and this goes from april 26th through april 30th and this gives us an overview of the overall temperature pattern we see colder along the west coast and typically this cold area we call it a negative pna it essentially forces the warmth into the central and eastern states uh, via the gulf there and this is going to bring with it plenty of humidity plenty of warmth as we can see on the map here and that is going to lead to a lot of energy that can cause thunderstorms we're going to look at that in a minute looking at the precipitation during this time frame we do see near normal here for a lot of the east during this time frame this does not mean there won't be bad storms typically average precipitation is rather high during this time of year but we can see that the plains in midwest are highly above average so this is a specific area that we're watching very very closely Looking at the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook, we can see not a lot changes. We do cool down or actually warm up better yet along the west here a little bit, but we still get this effect of warmth in the central and eastern states. So during this April 28th through May 4th time frame, not much changes. Precipitation still mostly above normal in the eastern half of the nation. So activity is going to be overall much higher than typical now quickly looking back at the past 20 days of temperatures we can see that overall throughout april we've seen a lot of cooler conditions over the north compared to what's normal for all of these individual areas and we can see that there has been warmer temperatures to the south compared to what is typical for all of these individual areas as we know typically the south is warmer north is cooler but because of these compared to normal uh, measurements here we can tell that there's a higher contrast between these two air masses than what is typical and as we know we learned this in uh, grade school really uh, cold air and warm air mixing is not good for severe weather that causes a lot of bad things and we are seeing that in full force effect throughout april so far so let's go ahead and move on and take a look at the european model and take a look at what kind of storms we have on the way Right now, as we just take a look at it here, we can see right out of the gate, we do have a storm system already ongoing, but we are going to see a much more frequent type of storm path here coming up soon. We see this low is pretty intense there between Iowa and Wisconsin there. We get this cold front, weaker cold front, so it's not really bringing frigid temperatures or anything, but the air back here is much colder than the air out ahead of it, so it's enough to cause disruptive severe weather and that is what we are seeing along this cold front and we have been seeing for a couple of days as we just move towards this afternoon later on today we do see that a lot of this is over the deep south here like texas coast louisiana coast areas of mississippi and alabama up through tennessee kentucky ohio west virginia pennsylvania new york and even some areas of canada there experiencing thunderstorms throughout the day today on monday the 21st as we just keep going a little bit here we can tell that we see by Tuesday the 22nd, a lot of this flattens out to areas further to the south. Along that Gulf Coast, along the southeast area, there is thunderstorms present for tomorrow. It makes sense that it flattens out so because that jet stream does as well. So we're seeing an overall flatter look here for Tuesday on the 22nd. But as we reach towards Wednesday on the 23rd, we get something interesting happening. And we've been talking about this for a couple of days. Uh, we don't have those big low pressure systems crossing the nation but instead we have this humidity and warmth just meandering its way in to areas of the plains and midwest areas of the east here areas of the ohio valley and great lakes we see this rising gulf action happening here again warmth and humidity and we get as a result tons of thunderstorms for numerous different states so we see this explosion of a more summer-like very active pattern thursday the 24th not a lot is changing it looks like something might want to come together here in this area across kind of the Rockies and Plains. We might see a low try to form along this area, but still just many different states dealing with thunderstorms here. And let's go ahead and move on towards Friday as well on the 25th. Now, as we take a look at Friday here, 
what we see is that a lot of that activity does shift eastward again there is some broad kind of areas of low pressure in here but still no serious low pressure center anywhere we see intense thunderstorms especially for the plains southern plains and the parts of the midwest ohio valley great lakes kind of like the deeper south and southeast here also getting some activity for friday on the 25th here Moving towards Saturday on the 26th, this is actually the morning time, 11 a.m., because this is an interesting date. We do get a low finally forming there over far eastern Canada. A dragging cold front, and this one is actually pretty intense. It does have some Arctic backing a little bit, not super, super cold, but it is a little bit more considerable than the one before it. And we get the warm air rushing up the east coast. And whenever you get this cold, dry air hitting the warm, humid air from the side like this, Typically, we do get really bad thunderstorms, so I wouldn't be surprised if we have another uh, kind of significant system to watch, perhaps, for the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday time frame. Uh, probably not Sunday, probably just, you know, maybe even a little bit of Thursday, actually. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that's going to be the 24th, 25th, 26th. Definitely be watching for that time frame. I will for sure be watching it. Uh, as we move towards the afternoon, we can see a lot of these reach the mid-Atlantic coast, areas of the Carolinas into Virginia. There is some thunderstorms in the deeper south, but I would expect that the biggest severe weather risk would perhaps be in this southern end. Depends how much of that uh, warmth and humidity makes it up the east coast, but we might even be looking at a northeast and mid-Atlantic event as well there uh, during this time frame. But by Sunday the 27th, that system's moved out, and you might be thinking, oh, we're probably done by this point, but we get some low pressure forming over Colorado, some new humidity and overall high temperatures moving into the plains and we get thunderstorms sparking up the day after that system is done so sunday the 27th we're already back at it again so no breaks this time monday very active some broad low pressure across the plains there into the upper midwest thunderstorms are abundant tuesday we get a little bit more dynamic with it we get this low here between kansas and nebraska maybe a little bit of a cold front trying to develop there we clearly have a warm front out here so we get this huge uh, sector we call it a warm sector where there is just tons of warmth as the name suggests but also that humidity this one is more intense i know you guys have heard me say humidity and temperatures over and over and over again in this video but this is a particularly intense look this cold is squeezing it eastward so it's adding pressure here the warm front is expanding northward and it's a very intense one so this allows for the warmth to just kind of erupt into this area the warmth and humidity in a much more intense way and i would say for this particular date we would be watching this area primarily for severe weather so the plains and midwest we are approaching 10 days out so we're going to start to take it with a grain of salt here but by the time we're reaching wednesday on the 30th that low does weaken a little bit it's over wisconsin maybe closer to illinois there still we have this dragging cold front look and very intense warm front look so a very hot day here in the east, this could be a lot of people's first 70s, 80s, and 90s, respectively, depending on how far north or south you are. We get intense thunderstorms still ongoing along that cold front boundary there for Wednesday the 30th. And as we reach towards May 1st here, it's going to be a Thursday. This low just bombs out. I mean, 982. It wasn't that strong the day prior, but a 982 here. Actually, a heavy snowmaker up there in Canada as well. We get this dragging cold front. It's not as high of precipitation as it once was, but I would expect that there would still be a thunderstorm threat here, maybe even some severe weather threat lingering. But again, this is actually 10 to 11 days out, so this is something that you want to take with a grain of salt and could change a little bit here. By the time we reach Friday, that system has moved out. Uh, we do still continue to see warmth and humidity bringing these thunderstorms along the southeast and Gulf states. We do see for the northern plains and upper Midwest, some thunderstorms are present as well. As we move towards Saturday, uh, we're a little bit quieter. There is some pinpoint areas, again, still like the Midwest and Southeast where we can see some thunderstorms, but nothing crazy, crazy intense here. It's not until we're reaching Sunday the 4th here where we start to get some low pressure going nearby the Central and Southern Plains. We get some precipitation to the north, probably not too much in the way of a threat of severe weather. Maybe this area here is experiencing some thunderstorms, but by Monday... It looks like we're going back at it all over again. A low here in the Great Lakes. We get a very intense lifting of this jet stream right into the low. Cold front right around there. This particular setup is very intense with this jet streak right up there to the north. That is just never a good look. Typically, this is associated with very high shear. 
We clearly have the warmth and humidity. So those two ingredients could spell a major severe weather event if we see anything like this. Again, I say it in that in that sense because we're at hours 360. So this could change dates. This could change its look. This could change entirely. Uh, but if this is any sort of a sneak peek into what we could be seeing in early May, really, really bad sign. Again, I want to talk more about that explosion. So let's go ahead and talk about the CAPE. And CAPE stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. And basically, it's going to simplify the temperatures and humidity for us and give us an actual measurement for the potential for development, as uh, the name kind of uh, suggests. We do see these values at the bottom. Anything under 1,000 is definitely going to present a thunderstorm risk and will semi-present a severe weather risk. But it's once we move into these greens and yellows where we certainly have sufficient CAPE for severe weather and obviously as you move into the orange reds and purple we're getting a little excessive with it where it's like even more than we even need it's just an overflowing amount of uh, potential for thunderstorms typically when we get these higher values that's the type of days where you could see a thunderstorm really intense one come through and then a few hours later another one and another one and another one because there's enough value here in these higher values for multiple thunderstorms to feed off of it it's like food so they do consume it it goes down as thunderstorms can consume this energy but again the higher values there's enough for multiple intense thunderstorms uh now we see that this is mostly suppressed to the deep south you know today tomorrow we do see a bit moving up into the ohio valley mid-atlantic here you know values right around 500 to a thousand so it is enough for severe weather it is enough for thunderstorms but we see an explosion here right around tuesday wednesday 22nd 23rd where we get these high values, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, shooting up into the plains, the deep south, into the Ohio Valley. I mean, look at that. And it looks like it's come to an end there, right around Sunday the 27th, but we get another just huge surge of it, and that does move eastward as well. We flatten off with it here around the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, but then we get another uh, pretty explosive uh, streak of it moving up into the north. So this is a very intense look. As we take a look at the total precipitation, we can see high values in the east as we are going to see numerous thunderstorms. So anywhere in the reds and, and uh, kind of brownish shades is typically where we're going to see above average. But the averages around the nation do value vary so much that we have pulled out the uh, anomaly in general. So this, this model guidance can actually uh, pick up what the averages are and then show what it is compared to that. And we see mostly below average here for the west. It's as we move into the Midwest and Plains, we're really flourishing as far as precipitation. And in this case, when we're looking at severe weather, that is bad news, obviously. This does extend into parts of the Deep South and Southeast here, but we do get a drier pocket here for parts of the lower Midwest, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, Northeast. It's slightly lower, right? So any of these lighter browns are typically less than an inch below average. So that's not hugely 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 significant significant um it's mostly as you get into these reds where it is getting concerning the blues is the opposite end of that where it's highly above average uh but typically i see the model you know output something like this where there will be a little streak in there that's below average and that does tend to shift on the models a lot so don't pay too much mind to that most areas in the east are a little bit above average most areas in the west are a little bit below average is the main theme here to pay attention to Storm Prediction Center outlooks. We'll look at the next three days. And again, this isn't really what we've been discussing in today's video. This is the very short term. Uh, I do expect to see an uptick in this over the coming week or two. Uh, but we do see a day today where we have in the lighter greens a general thunderstorm risk. And what that means is they do expect general thunderstorms. They don't expect much in the way of severe weather, uh, if any at all. But things do happen. Things can go like not how it's really expected to go. Uh, typically, we do see severe weather events that are very, very hard to predict. So heat every watch morning and advisory still is what I always say. Here in the level one marginal risk, which is our dark green area, we do expect isolated severe weather reports to come in. Uh, looking at day two, which will be tomorrow on Tuesday the 22nd, we have three marginal risk areas inside the general thunderstorm risk area. We actually do have a yellow area here for parts of New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. That is your level two slight risk where we do expect scattered about severe weather reports to come in. Day three, we do see a general thunderstorm risk again here. This is for Wednesday the 23rd, and we do see a marginal risk there for parts of the plains. But again, we're expecting a big uptick after this. We don't have any extended outlooks as of now, but I do expect those to come 
rolling in uh, within the coming days. So stay tuned for that. We do upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload, so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.